All right, everyone. So today we're going to look at Google Plus, and um, Google Plus is the network that came out in about 2011, and so it came out after Facebook, after Twitter, and so it saw what Facebook and Twitter had done and wanted to do it better. And so I'm just going to show you an example here of a Google Plus profile. You can claim your own name, as we'll see, just like every network, but the way it is on Google Plus is google.com slash plus and then a name. So for example, I like to use the example of Mashable. So if you check out the Mashable profile, Mashable is this website that I really recommend to follow for all of this all of these updates on technology and social media and SEO, great articles. They've also got a website, Mashable.com. They're on Twitter, twitter.com slash Mashable. They're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Mashable, etc., etc. They're on everything, Vine, Snapchat, Periscope. They do everything. <clears throat> so they've also got a Google Plus profile. And you'll see that a Google Plus, a Google Plus profile looks reminiscent of other profiles like Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And you'll see here that Mashable has 5.3 million followers, and it has 563 million views of their content. So things like this should show that, unfortunately, <clears throat> Google Plus does have a negative perception, unfortunately. I think that's just because Facebook has so much momentum that, okay, I got Facebook, and my mom got Facebook, and my aunt got Facebook, and everyone got Facebook. That's part of the reasons I'm not on Facebook anymore. I want to connect with cool people. So um, the thing then with having so many people on Facebook is you're not going to convince them to go to another network. Maybe you discover Periscope, let's say, or Vine or something, and you're not going to convince your, your friends to get it, perhaps, because they're already in Facebook or Snapchat or something. So Google Plus really suffered, has suffered from that, that people say, well, I got a Google Plus account, it's a ghost town, I don't see any of, any of my friends. And so to some degree that's true, you're not going to see your friends there. They're already happy on Instagram or Facebook or wherever they're at, you're not going to convince them to go to another network. So the short answer is, get new friends. And I'm not going to be using Google Plus again for personal. Remember, everything that we're really learning about this class is really to learn how to run social media for businesses. So we're going to talk about Google Plus and how we can use it for business purposes. So it doesn't matter that my friends are not on Google Plus or my family. I can see them on Facebook or whatever when I log in once a month. So on Google Plus is where I go every day almost to post something fun and interesting and funny and I get a lot of results. I get a lot of activity. And if that's what you're in it for social networks, then Google Plus is a great place to be in because you learn about the latest things such as Pizza Rat. Who's heard of Pizza Rat? Pizza Rat just happened, which is a rat that stole a slice of pizza. Oh, that's a random squirrel. <laughs> I thought there was more to it because they're doing like the voice and stuff all over Twitter and I'm like, what? Well, that's hot. That's it's hot. Everyone wants to, to get a piece of Pizza Rat, just like Grumpy Cat and all of that. So I saw Pizza Rat and I also saw Cigarette Crab. So it's a crab with a cigarette. But uh, Google Plus is like any other social network. You can learn about uh, things. You can keep up with memes and funny things and, and everything. So um, for business, for business, again, you can really reach an audience. So just to show you. <coughs> Um, they have a lot of activity there, and um, we're going to create a Google Plus account so that we can use it for businesses. Now, Google Plus is similar to Facebook um, in that you have to create a personal account first, and then you can create business accounts. So on Facebook, they want you to create a personal account, a personal profile, and then you can create business pages. We do the same thing on Google+. So you may not want to use Google+, for personal, that's fine. Stick with the other networks that you like, but we do need to create this basic account. You don't need to put your 
your full name, your high school, your favorite books, what movies you saw. You don't have to use it for personal. You just have to create a personal account and then we can create a business account. So we can go to plus.google.com if you've already got a personal account we'll be able to create a business one very easily in a moment but if you don't have anyone we'll do it here if you've got a YouTube account that will that will also work to upgrade it to Google Plus if you've got like an Android phone and it has a Gmail account we can use that to upgrade it for Google Plus also so let's go to Google let's go to plus.google.com and right there it'll ask you your email address to log in or if you don't have a Gmail account a YouTube account or whatever you can click at the bottom create account So I think the best thing to do is put in your email address and click next and since uh, well let me get a show of hands how many of you have a Gmail account so almost yeah the whole class basically so just use your Gmail address to log in your Gmail doesn't have to be your business address that's fine because what I do is I have my personal Gmail address I log in and then I can manage the Google Plus accounts of all of my clients so you don't need to have a personal you don't have to have to, a business Gmail account for a business Gmail uh, page. So take a moment to log in. I'm going to log in, and then we'll go. Then we'll go on. All right, so you want to log in as your personal account, and we'll go on. Does anyone need a little, little help logging in? So, say, what is the difference if we have the business into the personal one instead of creating a new one? Because I have the, the same domain. Well, I have the, the domain with the nerd mm -hmm. but I didn't bother to create like a business. The problem would be that if you've got a personal account, a personal profile in Google+, it does not show you a lot of your statistics. Oh. <clears throat> so if you want to see which of your posts was most effective, how you got your followers, your traffic, and all of that, you need the business one. Oh, okay. So we will be able to convert it or transfer it over, but we'll have to check during the lab. Um, so right now we all need to be logged into our personal account. Does anyone need any help? Okay, so I'm on my personal account. My, my picture's on the top right. have some notifications there. Um, at the top right corner, if you click on your profile icon it'll tell you for example you're using your profile and the terminology is kinda generic unfortunately Google Plus and Facebook do the same thing but a personal account is a profile and then a business account is a is a is a page so at the top right it's telling me I'm logged into my personal profile and notice on mine here, it's showing me all of these business accounts that I can edit. So VMC Inc., Texcoco, Swap Dots, etc. So I can manage other companies' business pages, no problem. And none of my personal stuff will, uh, will show up on the business pages. People always ask, well, uh, is that safe? Is, are they, is my name going to be connected with the business page? No, they do keep it separate because they want Google Plus and Facebook and such, they want a regular person to be able to manage business pages. So you probably don't have any pages here, but once you get pages, like I'll show you in a moment, you'll be able to manage them. 
So at the um, at the top left corner, you'll see the home the home button. If you hover your mouse over that menu, it changes. So it's not really the home button because if I go to profile, it's going to change to profile, right? The name of it always changes depending where you go. So I'm not always going to call it the home screen, or I mean the home button. It's just that menu at the top corner. If you hover over the menu, we're going to go to the pages, the pages uh, section. So let's hover over and select pages. So like in my case, this shows me at a glance, these are the different business pages that I manage or with other people because there can be more than one manager. And if there's any notifications, I'll get a little preview there. And if I want to manage a page, I can click. Well, at the moment, you don't have any pages to manage because you just have the personal account. So within this screen, I think it shows a, a video uh, about how great pages are, so you can watch the video on your own time. But you should have a button that says Get Your Page. So click on Get Your Page, and then it asks Choose a Business Type. Storefront, Service Area, or Brand. If you choose Storefront or Service Area, you might not be able to complete today's tasks because it's going to want you to confirm your location. So if you're a real bakery, a pizza shop, a plumber, whatever, it's going to ask you, okay, put in your address of your shop, put in your phone number, and we're going to call your business and verify. Because that's how they prevent someone else from creating a profile in your name and then putting negative things there. So if I was a pizza shop and I had a competitor that was also a pizza shop, uh, I could go in and create an account for them and write in there, a rat stole our pizza. But the way that gets prevented is by the storefront or service area will ask you for your, your, your address and phone number. So for us, just to learn how to do this, I'm going to say let's select the brand, the brand link that will let you still create a business and such, uh, but it's not going to ask you to, to, um, you know, to verify a location. It'll say create your Google Plus page, name, website, type of page. So this name, let's say I'm going to make up. I usually make up this fake company, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to add the name. This name here is not the name that you're going to get for your address. Uh, you know how a moment ago I showed google.com slash plus Mashable. That address is not this name here. This name I can put spaces and capital letters and exclamation points. All that stuff. And so this name that we have here, it doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be part of it. Now, did I mention on the Twitter lecture, I teach too many classes, so I forget. Did I mention in this class about the, the emoji website that you can copy and paste from? Okay, so we'll mention it one more time, but you can go to getemoji.com and maybe copy a, an, an icon and put it in your name. So that's going to help you stand out, little things like that. We won't be able to put that in the, in the, um, in the address, but technically I bet you one day you will be able to put emoji in your web addresses because, for example, Japanese. You can go to a website that's written completely in Japanese because it's simply an alphabet. Emoji is a version of an alphabet. It's not really supported by web browsers yet as a valid address, but I bet you one day you're going to be able to get, you know, alienhead.com instead of writing alien. You're going to be able to use that little alien icon. All 
Okay, so we are creating page name, website. If you have a website, you want to put your website there. On another screen, we will be able to link the other um, the other links that you might have because you already have a LinkedIn profile, you have an Instagram profile, you have a Twitter profile. We will be able to link those to our Google Plus page. But this one is just asking us for a website if you already have one. If you don't, you can leave it empty, but if you do have a website, you can fill it in. Type of page, whichever one makes sense here. There's not too many options, so just product, for example. Agree to the pages, uh, to the terms of the pages, and then click Create Page. Oops, I guess we can't use emoji. Never mind. I'm trying to put the little alien in there, and it says invalid character. Oh, What's that? It did let you? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's wrong with mine? Maybe it doesn't like aliens. That's pretty racist. <laughs> Create page. Yeah, it doesn't like the aliens. Oh, I guess it does. As long as I don't put it on the front. It let me put it at the end. Well, when you create the page, it might ask you about a, a tour. You can skip the tour for the moment. But anyway, there we go, Victor's Bakery. Oh, it didn't like the upside down exclamation point for some reason, but it did let me do the alien. All right, so part of your homework, you can do this on your own, but part of your homework, of course, will be to fill out these different sections of your profile. Like right now, I just have the generic icon right here of this gift. I, um, I want to put in my own icon. And I want to put in a tagline and, and uh, complete other aspects of my site, of my profile here. You want to do that. That's part of the homework. But you can do it later. Because you're not going to entice people to follow you if you are if you're the generic icon. So if you click on the Edit button, it'll take you to this screen where you can edit. I'll explain what people and communities are, but here's where you can edit the story, where you can edit your contact info and links. So you can look at that on your own, but that's going to be where to add, let's say, a phone number, an address, other links to other profiles. Your tagline will help you get found because, again, Google Plus is part of the Google network and that has a search box. You'll be able to search. All right, so on the menu, you might notice if you hover over the menu now, you have you have some some uh, screens. Of course, you've got my business, Google Plus page, and Stream. So now that we know on the top right corner that you can have a personal or a business page, you should then use your business page instead of the personal one because the personal one doesn't give you some features. So you can easily switch between personal or business with that icon on the top right. And when I'm in business, I have My Business, Google Plus, Page, and Stream. So under My Business would just give me an overview of, of my stats and such. This is one of the reasons to get a business page, so you can see here, Insights. This is found in the My Business. If you go to Insights and view more, if you have Insights, and that'll tell you how many views you got, which posts were more effective, which posts people really cared about, how many followers I have. Because again, all of this social media stuff, it's a great ego boost to have 3 million views, sure. but 
uh, that is going to result in, in actions when you have followers, that when you post something, they will read your blog, they will read your poetry, they will see your artwork, they will hire you, they will buy your product when you've got followers. I've got Google Plus page, and that's the screen here where I can edit various aspects of my, of my site. And at the moment, my brand new page, your page, also at the top, you'll see that your address looks something like this, plus.google.com slash b slash gibberish. So when you first create an account, your, your web address for Google Plus is going to be something like that. But if you want a nice, easily rememberable name, you know, like google.com slash plus PMD Interactive, my company, you'll be able to claim that name. But the thing is that they, they don't let you claim the short name until you've used, until you've set up your profile and until you've used it for a little while because they don't want just anyone to create a spam account and start spamming people. So eventually you'll be able to get your name like this. You just need to set up your profile, you need to use it, as we'll talk about, and then when you log in at, cer at a certain point, at, at the top it'll say, claim your custom URL. At the moment it won't let you. And you'll be able to find that over on the on the Google Plus page screen, because when you come here, it'll also let you select that from within the links section here. Eventually, you'll be able to select your custom address, but maybe not at the beginning. Your stream is what's going to look like a ghost town when you first set this up, because uh, you have no connections. Google Plus calls them circles. There's an icon there that says people. You, you can circle people. We'll talk about that in a moment, but I don't have any I don't have any posts from anyone because I'm not following anyone. I don't have any posts because I just created an account. So to reiterate something that I've said for the other networks that's valuable is you do want to add some posts before you try to start to get followers because no one is going to be enticed to follow you unless you have some posts. So I would say three to five posts. I want to add three to five posts. Yeah, I, ha I don't have any followers, but I want to add posts so that when someone thinks about following me, they can see, I like that photo, or I like that video, or that link is useful. And then they can click the follow button. So notice here on your stream you can you can uh, publish a text post, a photo post, or you know a gallery. You can put up more than one photo, a link to a website, a video, a YouTube video, an event, or a poll. So you have all of these kinds of posts that you can create. So let's practice with adding our very first post. Uh, wherever you're at, let's go over to the stream screen. And if you click on share what's new, um, it's, uh, we're going to share a text post. Notice you can click on the icon. Let's say I want to share a photo post. You can click, or you can simply click on the box. And even if I had selected a text post, I can still mix and match. I can still add photos, even though it was a text post. I can even add a link, etc. So you're not limited to the kind of post all the time. But let's say I'm going to add a text post at this moment. Another one of these posts saying, you know, uh, we're happy to be on Google Plus. Follow us for exclusive contests. Because I might want to decide, I've got a bunch of social networks. Which social network will I, re will I really focus on? Which social network is my audience at? Which social network do I like the most myself. So I'm going to say maybe on Google Plus I might be focusing on contests or certain kinds of content. That way you entice people to, to
to follow you. Again, you're not going to be convincing your friends and family to follow you on Google+. You're not going to be convincing them to follow your business on Google+. Um, you're going to be convincing new people, strangers, new customers to interact with you. But I don't have anything to offer them yet until I post something, so follow us for exclusive content. And I'll show you a trick here that not a lot of people know about Google+. Uh, one of the things that I like is this is one of the few social networks where you can add a little bit of formatting, meaning you can bold your text, you can italicize your text, uh, nothing super crazy like colors on your text or background pictures and such, then we'd go back into the, into the chaos of MySpace. But uh, here we can add bolding and italics, and I'll show you how like this. There's no way to, to, to select it intuitively. You have to know the trick, and I'll show you the trick. Whenever you want to bold something, you have to add the asterisks around it. Those are the little stars, shift 8. You put an asterisk around a word or a sentence, this will become bold text once you share it. You don't see it until you share it. But after I publish this, this will convert into bold text. Wherever the asterisk starts and where it ends, everything in the middle will be bold. This will be bold text. If you want to italicize text, you do underscores. So those are two ways to make your words stand out, because a lot of people don't know this. And when someone is following a bunch of accounts, all the content may kind of run together. But if you use bold or italics judiciously, that could get people's attention. And there's one more that I don't think is that useful, but sometimes you can use it. It's called strike through. Strike through, and what that will do is it will draw a line across your words. Like it's crossed out. Again, not a lot of not a lot of reason maybe to use it, but you can. And those are just dashes. So those are the three kinds of formatting. We can't do colors, and we can't do HTML, and backgrounds, and, and all of that. Maybe they will in the future, but this is what we've got at the moment. So I'm writing some text, maybe putting some styling. Next I have to decide who should see this. The default is public, so any of my followers could see it. Anyone in Google Plus can see it. Anyone that does a Google search could see it. So public is the most open one, and if you put your mouse on that, it'll say public. May be visible by anyone, anywhere. So that's one of the most public places. Instead of public, I also have the ability to choose your circles. And when we talk about circling people, that's basically going to be almost private, almost like a group message. Let's say I'm connected to 10 people. They're in my circles. So if I select your circles, this will be sent to, or the people in those circles will get a notification that says Victor's Bakery shared something with you. And only those people would see it. No other people in the, in the social network, in Google+. And then a, a cool one here is extended circles. Let's say I, I did have 10 connections. And so if I share it to them, those 10 would see it. But what if those 10 also had 10 followers? So 10 times 10, 100. So then those, that post that I originally shared to 10 people could actually reach 100 people, because that's like the friends of friends. So let's say I have a, a, a fashion company, and I want to reach people that, inter, that are into my style. So I share extended circles, and it'll reach more people. What I like to do is put extended circles and public. 
because extended circles is already going to send it to my followers, at my circles. That's why I don't have to select your circles. So extended circles will reach my direct followers, those that I'm following, and it'll go out to reach the friends of the friends. And because if I don't select public, no one else would be able to see it. So I like public and extended circles to reach the most people. I also have the ability, once I connect with people and add them to circles, I can say show it only to the VIPs. Because with my company I can connect with people and I'll put them into the VIP circle and only those people can see this content. We'll talk about circles and how to add people, but the short thing is that people always ask, if I add someone to a circle, do they know it? Yes, they know that you added them to a circle, but they won't know the name of the circle. So I can create as many circles as I want. I can create a circle called Annoying People, and I'll put the annoying people in that circle, and they'll never know they were in the annoying circle. They'll just say, they'll just know, Victor's Bakery put you in this, put Victor's Bakery circled you. That's all the, they'll see. They won't know that, that you're an annoying person. So I can share it to multiple circles, to following and customers, or team members, or whatever. And we have some basic built-in ones as a business, but we can create more. We can also share this content to individual people. Notice it says, add names, circles, or email addresses. So if you know someone on Google that is on Google+, Plus, you can add their name. You know, if you start typing a name, it will show a variety of people. Um, but there's more than one Victor Campos on Google+, Plus, so you might not find me right away. Uh, but you can share. Yes, this will share to any random person. And yes, if you're sending something that they don't care about, they might block you or they might say, leave me alone or something. And I wouldn't really use this as a business to, sp to spam people. I wouldn't be randomly choosing a bunch of names and sending them something unless, like, really I can justify it. Maybe I have some kind of company that I really think Victor Campos's in the world would like this. Maybe I would send it to them, but I'd be careful. And I can also select emails. So if I put in someone's email address here, if they are on, if they are on, um, if they are on Google Plus, it will say, "Okay, they're on Google Plus," and you'll send it to them. If they're not on Google+, Plus, this will send them an email. And this, this will work, but it's, it's going to be limiting because if I post this on Google+, Plus and I send someone an email, they, they'll get an email that says Victor, uh, Victor's Bakery shared something with you on Google+, Plus, and they might be able to see it or see a preview of it and such, but they won't be able to like it or comment on it or anything like that because they don't have a Google+, Plus account. It'll ask them to create an account, and then they can interact. So I'm just going to put it on extended and public, and then I'll share. There we go. So after you share is when you see. There's my bold, text, italic, and stripe. Everything that I post on Google+, Plus, I can go back and edit, because I might have posted something brilliant, except for that misspelling. So this is just telling me, nice post. Here are a few quick tips. Did you find a typo? Use the drop-down menu on your post, and then other features. So I, I don't like that it's invisible until you put your mouse on it, but I put that post, and if I put my mouse on top of the post, then that little arrow appears. And in that arrow, I have the option to go back to edit the post. If I really don't want people to see it actually, I can delete it. I can get the link to the post, that link right there, then I can send people an email. So this is how you can get some followers on, on Google Plus in one way. Let's say you have people subscribed to your website, or, or you have an email list. You could put out your, your content on Google Plus, and then get the link to the post, and 
when you send out your emails to people, include that link, and some of them will ignore it. Well, most of them will ignore it. And some of them will say, that's interesting, let me follow. So you might send it to 100 people and 3 sign up, 5 show up, sign up, 10 sign up, maybe. But that's how you can do that. You can, you can share the link to your post. Embedded post is if you have a website and you want to copy this particular post and put it live on your website. That way people can see it and reply to it and such right on your website. Let's say you put something controversial. So you want people to see it, but if you don't want them to reply, you can mute post. Oh wait, not that one. That's something else. Sorry, I meant disable comments. Mute post is something else. If you don't want people to be able to comment, you can disable comments. And they can see it, but they can't comment. I personally think that's pretty annoying, but you can do that if you need to or if you want to, and turn it on and off easily. So if people commented and then you disable comments, their last comments will still be visible. But you can go into people's comments and then click delete and you can remove them. <coughs> On Google Plus, like the other networks, we have the same sorts of activities, the same four interactions. We have a favorite, we have a share, we have a comment, and we have a follow. So on Google+, Plus, they call it giving it a plus one, a like. On Twitter, it's a favorite. But on Google+, Plus, you click the plus one, and that was like a like. So this number will increase as more people do it. So you'll get a, a number there. I have plus ten, if ten people liked it and such. So similar to Twitter. I've got share. So if I see someone's post and want to share it to my own followers, I can click that share, and then I can also set it who can see this. So I can change to and add my own comment. And then I can add a comment directly to the original post right there. So it's got the same three interactions. And so if I'm looking at someone's stuff, and then I can do the plus one and everything, and the fourth interaction is add to circles. I can roll over um, anyone's name up here, add to circle, and that's when, you, when you're going to connect with them. So you can put them in any circles you want. At the moment, I've got those circles following, customers, VIPs, team members. I can create a new one. So let's say I'm, I am going to create a circle of um, for Victor. So all the Victors on Google+, Plus, I'm going to find them and collect them. I'm going to put them in this, in these circles, in this circle. So right now that Victor got a notification that said Victor's Bakery followed you. Are you sending this again to put him in a circle? Yes, so let's say you find someone like this Victor Campos right here. You, you have, sometimes you'll see that it says add, and sometimes you'll see that it says follow. But if you put your mouse on that, then you can put him in a circle, and that's following them. Do you have search for a name? Yeah, you've got search at the top. So again, search is really powerful on most of these networks. Uh, you want to use it for finding keywords or people, making connections.
Okay, so we're going to end the main lecture in a little bit, but the thing that I want to do for today, we're going to look at Google Plus um, for two days, of course, then we'll have a homework. The, uh, the homework's already been added to Blackboard, but it's not due until next Wednesday, so it'll be officially assigned on Wednesday. But uh, what you want to do in our class time here, for example, is you want to uh, finish setting up your profile, and you want to... Um, Make sure you've got your icon on your profile and, and your biography and such. You want to add your three to five posts. And then what I would say is you want to go up to search and start connecting with people or companies. When we come back next time, we'll talk about the more effective ways to get followers. Because again, a lot of these things overlap. So if I follow accounts, some of them will follow me. But maybe you shouldn't blindly follow like I did. For example, I followed this Victor Campos right here, but if I had first taken a moment to look at his profile, I would have seen he hasn't posted anything since uh, August 30th, 2014. So he probably will not follow me. He looks like he left Google+. So before you follow anyone, I would click on their name to view their profile, and if they haven't posted anything recently, then forget it. Look at that, since 2012. For shame. This guy is pretty current, June 2015. He might not be the best customer, but uh, anyway, you're going to be searching, adding people. You, I don't believe you have a limit, because there's a limit on Twitter. I think you have, you, you have a limit of following 200 people per day on Twitter. Uh, and no one's really going to reach that except spammers, I think. But on Google+, Plus, I don't think there's a limit to how many you can follow. But that's a tactic. You, you follow people. Uh, you can also search. Like let's say I'm, I'm searching for um, technology. So there's some companies, there's some names, people posting about technology. I could, um, I could follow accounts. I could plus one. Right now, this this account got um, uh, right here. Dan Barry got a notification. I plus one his post. <laughs> So you want to to do that. Uh, post some content, start to try to get followers and and give plus ones and give shares and such. When we come back next time, we'll talk about I think one of the most effective and honestly I think one of the best and most fun ways to use Google Plus. Um, that's something called communities. But we'll look at it together next time. We'll have some lab time for. Uh, you know, about an hour or so the rest of the day. And if you have any homework you still want to turn in, you can. Remember, the LinkedIn assignment is due tonight, so if you haven't done it yet, you can. Uh, you still have some time. If you want me to look over your content, I can look at it, and then you can turn it in. So I'm going to upload the video if you need to watch it, and that'll be it. So we'll have some lab time, and if you need any help, call me over.